Hi, I'm Becky Brooks, Adoption UK's Education Policy Advisor, and I'm here again with another in our series of videos um, offering support and help, hopefully, to families who find their children unexpectedly home from school. I am a home educating parent and I also work from home and I've been doing that for three years. And that's the position that some of you might find yourself unexpectedly thrust into now with school closures and instructions to work from home. Um, so if that's you, I thought today I would like to share some of the things that I've learned over this three year journey of home educating and home working because it wasn't easy in the beginning and it took us quite a long time to find our rhythm. And I would say that as a first thing, you can probably expect as things are changing that your rhythm will not be there straight away. And um, so be easy on yourself, be kind to yourself. You're not going to be able to give a full time broad education to your children like the school would. You're not going to be able to put the level of commitment into your work that you usually would do. And everyone's going to be understanding of that because at this time, what's important is to prioritise your own mental and physical health and that of your family. And really in, in adoptive families to try to support your children the best that you can to manage the change and the uncertainty that's going on. As a home educating parent, this is our permanent situation. But for you, with your children unexpectedly at home, um, it's happened quite fast. It's happened perhaps without all that much warning. And there's no end time to it at the moment. We don't know when this will end. And all of that can be very unsettling for everybody. So before anything else, let's think about managing our anxiety. Let's think about spending time together as a family. Let's think about ensuring that people are regulated and calm and safe. And when you feel like those kinds of things are getting under control, then that's the time to start thinking, well, how can I... Um, look after my children, maintain some kind of obligation to the work that's expected of me um, that might be quite important work um, because everything's changing for everybody and people are needing your attention at work. How can we get a rhythm going forward? So I would say that a lot of it's obviously going to depend on your own household, the nature of your work and the age of your children. A lot of my work is computer based. I do, I'm doing a lot of typing. I'm doing a lot of conference calls and virtual meetings. And um, some of those can be quite tricky with children in the house running about, running about all the time. My children are on the younger side. They are nine and five. Um, so they can be quite demanding. They don't want to sit at the table when I'm working and do their work for a long period of time. That's not really possible for them. And so we've got to be quite flexible and we've got to have realistic expectations of what we're actually going to achieve in the course of a day. Um, so the first thing I would say is, although you might be used to working full time and although there may be a lot of demands on you from work, you are not going to be able to continue to work full time at home when your children are there. That, that much is obvious already. Um, but what, what can be helpful is for you to set aside specific times of the day when you are going to be trying to work and then specific times of the day when you are definitely not going to be working and your children know that you are not working, and you're available to them. And what's important in this is, is something that I call work hygiene, because when you work from home, there is no arriving at the office and leaving the office to mark the start and end of your working day. And what can happen is that your phone is there and your laptop is there and an email comes in and you see the notification pop up and you're tempted to then answer that email or deal with that query um, your your children are going to need you not not to do that um, at this at this time so I tend to be quite strict about it on the on the time when I say I'm not working whether that's because I work part-time whether that's one of my non-working days or whether it's my break in the morning or my break at lunchtime the computer is closed the phone it goes on silent and it goes in a drawer so I can't even see it so the children know that when I'm available for them I'm fully available for them and I'm not going to be distracted every two minutes with things coming in from work and that helps us to split up and structure our day in a way that's predictable for them in terms of trying to work while your children are in the home um I mean ideally it would be better if you were able to work in a different room from where your children are my children actually find it quite difficult to be around me but not to know that I'm not available for them and it took us a long time to be able to manage that um, so if if you are in the fortunate position of having two adults in the house, um, if you're both working from home, it might be wise to look at ways that we can take turns to be working. One of your works and one of you stays with the children. But that might not be possible. That's not how we work when I'm working from home with the children. It's just me and the children and we've got to find a way to manage it. So um, I would say let's be realistic about expectations. You're alone in the home. You are trying to get some work done. Your children are also there. You're concerned about their well-being and giving them something 
to do that's not just wasting their time or going square eyed looking at screens all day long. Um, and so let's try and think about things to manage expectations there. The truth is that sometimes your children will be watching TV. Uh, sometimes your children will be on screens. Sometimes your children will be playing. Sometimes your children will need to occupy themselves if they can while you're trying to get something done. The way I look at that is that if my children were at school all day, they may come home in the evening and have downtime and watch TV a little bit and go on screens a little bit. We, we do that in the daytime. And then when working hours are over, I'm available to them to do all the activities and spend time together that we would have perhaps done in the daytime. Alternatively, depending on what your work is, you might find that if you can prioritise the work that's coming in, you can leave the things that are not time sensitive until your children don't need you. So perhaps after they've gone to bed at night or if they're older and they go to bed later than you, perhaps in the morning when they're still asleep uh, and you've got up much earlier than they have. Uh, that's one of the other ways that I manage my work. So I deal with things that are time sensitive at the time, but anything really that can be done at any time. I will try and fit that in um, while the children don't need me. Um, so I'm covering the amount of hours that I should be covering, but I'm not necessarily covering those hours during office hours. One of the things that has been a big source of contention in our house for a long time was snacks. <laughs> I know it sounds like a small thing, but my children would be in and out every two minutes asking for snacks and drinks, continually asking for snacks and drinks. And so we found that we made a timetable, we make a planner for the day. If you watch some of our earlier videos, you might have seen me talk about the way that we structure our day with cards that we arrange and the order of when we're going to do things. Um, and we build into that snack time, lunch time, uh, so the children know when the food is coming. Um, it's sometimes the children are not asking for snacks because they're actually hungry. They're asking for snacks because they need me to pay them some attention now. I, if I can, will turn away from the computer and give them some attention um, if, it, if it calms things down. Um, but so time in your snacks, make sure the children know when those things are coming. It might work for you. We don't do this, but other families do, to have a box for each child with snacks in. Um, all laid out at the start of the day so they know they can go and access that whenever is appropriate or at any point decided on what you decide is, is the way forward. Although my children are young, they both will sit at the table and do their own work for short periods of time. But again, it wasn't like this in the beginning and we've worked our way towards that. So if you're finding that it's not possible for your child, if they've got work to do from school, to sit in the room with you and do that work, um, then, then, then don't push it. Because actually... None of you are going to be able to get anything done if one of you is very dysregulated and um, and distressed. And that's not going to be a good working environment for anybody. It is a juggling act and there's no two ways about it. So be realistic and be kind to yourself. You may be feeling under pressure from work at the moment. Um, you may be feeling under pressure from lots of other sources as well. You may be concerned about your children's education falling behind. But you cannot work and they cannot learn if people are distressed dysregulated, unable to stay calm, full of anxiety and stressed. You, you need to prioritise in your family the calm of the household, really. So just to be summing up, I would say have a plan for snacks, <laughs> have a structure for your day that you've all agreed on, make it clear to the children when you are available to do things with them and when you won't be available to do things with them and stick to that, however many emails and phone calls and messages you get from work so that your children know that they can rely on you in those times when you've said you will be available. Push as much of the work as you can to times when your children don't need you, if that's at all possible. Um, take breaks yourself and have those breaks with your children where you can. So when my children have a snack break in the morning, I have a snack break in the morning, I take 15 minutes off. Uh, and we sit together and have a snack and a chat and do something. Um, when the children need lunch, I also take time off and we have lunch together. So we make sure that we're building in those times when we're spending some time together. It is difficult and um, it can be a strain. And um, I'm not going to lie about that. But if you build in some structure to your day and you have some clear expectations of yourself that are not too onerous, then it ought to be possible to survive the next few weeks, which is what we're basically trying to do. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. If you've got any comments or suggestions of your own, please, please do join in the conversation. We want to hear from as many people as possible. We want to know how you're managing, what fantastic top tips you found. Um, and we want to engage as many people as possible in the conversations that we're having and the community that we've got at Adoption UK. Bye.